Hey, everybody, we have a special guest in the studio today, and we're going to be talking about Nampa, Idaho. What's he going to say? I have no idea. One way to find out. Stick around. Hey, everybody, Dave Edwards, Treasure Valley Dave here, and today we have a fabulous guest. This is Brian. He uh, popped into the office, and we're going to take advantage of this moment to pick his brain. So a little bit about Brian. He came from California. He moved to Idaho. He lives here in Nampa, and I kind of want to find out what he thinks about what Nampa's like, and would he prefer to stay back in California? Let's find out. Hey, Brian. Hey, how's it going? Hey, great. Wow. Thanks for stopping by. Glad to help. I'm, I live nearby. I've been here for four years, so. Four years. Wonderful four years. And here in Nampa. Correct. Nice. So um, now that you've been up here for four years, you probably have a pretty good feel for what it's like to live here and maybe what Nampa's like. Uh, so Nampa population about approaching 100,000, so uh, similar to many towns in California. Uh, and like many towns in California, there's different neighborhoods, different vibes. We live north of Highway 84, and it's a little more farm rustic. Our neighbors across the street are cows, for instance. Uh, but if you like a little more uh, urban, there, there's downtown. If you like more, you know, residential, you know, subdevelopment, there's plenty of those popping up all over the valley as well and all over Nampa. So depending on what you're looking for, you can probably find it. We have a one acre uh, and a barn, so we have plenty of space for ourselves. But uh, half a mile down the street, you can get a brand new tract home, three car garage with an RV and just enough land to grow a small garden and have a barbecue. That's really nice. So um, these different parts of town. Did, what, did you consider these other parts before you found the one? And it's like, what drove you from living the city life? It's almost like Green Acres. Marvelous, darling. <laughs> uh, and now you you almost have a country feel. Like you see, you have cows across the street. Uh, just what we want to do long term. You know, we plan the head. Uh, we don't, you know, our last, ten, our last home in California, we were there for well over 10 years. So we don't hopscotch houses. If we were going to make such a big life change, we wanted to make sure that the home and the property that we got would meet our needs and uh, any hobbies or desires down the road. Uh, we had scoured the entire Treasure Valley, Boise, Meridian, Caldwell, Nampa, Middleton, you name it. We found that Nampa is centrally located where it's, you know, it's 20 minutes to the Boise airport from our house. And it's a straight shot on Highway 84. Highway 84 compared to Highway 8, Zamps. Night and day, uh, a couple of slowdowns during the commute rush, uh, but you're still moving at 30 miles an hour. Uh, even then, there's not a lot of parking lot going on there. So that was a, a good uh, factor for us. If I get a job working at Boise, Boise is you know pretty healthy job market. So you're still close to the action, Boise, but not too far away, and the traffic's not that bad. Uh, in addition, uh, we are about five minutes away from a, a key shopping for groceries, your Walmarts, your Winco's. You guys have Winco's there? We have Winco's, Albertson's, grocery outlet if you're into that. So, you know, most of the items and most of the businesses that we pour, uh, supported in California, they're up here in Treasure Valley. It's not radically different. Uh, you Even in and out the in and out is coming soon. And in plus, as a bonus, there's a couple chains that uh, aren't in California that you might like, like Freddy's uh, Steak Burgers. They're nice. So overall, uh, you know, we were Central North California, the Treasure Valley area, and certainly Nampa, very similar there. You're not going to miss a bunch. Uh, I think the only thing we don't have is a Wiener Schnitzel nor an Ikea, but otherwise we have everything else that uh, was readily available in Northern California. Well, let's touch on that traffic for a little bit. So you live near Interstate 80 between Sacramento and San Francisco. Correct. And there's nothing out there. I mean, why should there be any traffic there? And then how does that compare to what we have here? Uh, yeah, it was uh, Highway 80. There was, my experience is, I'm assuming, Bay Area refugees wanting to get out of the Bay Area. Yeah. And every afternoon from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock, it was just a parking lot, sometimes both ways. Uh, compared to Highway 84, you have... You know, in the Treasure Valley area, at most half a million people between all the major towns and all the uh, other smaller towns. And the design of the Highway 84, back when they did planned it out, uh, was well thought out. Uh, there's not infinite number of on ramps and off ramps. There's the overall valley road grid wise is actually planned on a one mile square grid. So you could take a back road if there is a wreck or something on the freeway. It happens a lot uh, since all the roads 
the grids are parallel to Highway 84, if Highway 84 experiences some traffic accident that shuts the thing down, uh, you could pop off on one of the off ramps, you know, go up a couple miles, and then go a parallel route and get to your destination. Nice. So um, the Central Valley of California, can we compare the weather from there to up here? Idaho, our Treasure Valley, we have all four seasons. So summertime, you're going to be pushing 100 degrees. Uh, wintertime, you're going to have some snow. Uh, most of the snow that I have experienced usually melts by lunchtime. It's a light dusting, usually uh, just enough to be pretty and make great photos for your friends. Uh, and then spring and fall are about comparable. Uh, I did a lot of gardening, growing flowers and whatnot in California. Uh, if you like your citrus, like your lemons and your oranges, but you're not going to be able to do that here unless you build a greenhouse. They will not survive the winter. But as far as tomatoes and peppers and all those other garden staples, we've been very successful with those here. Excellent. Well, let's talk about Nampa a little bit. Um, you're talking about you have all these shopping things. Um, how is your shopping experience when you, if you need something, you need a part to fix one of your cars or something? Mm -hmm. Do you have that here? Or, I mean, we don't have Pet Boys anymore. Yeah. Uh, you know, as far as carports, uh, within five miles of where you just decide to live, there's going to be your chains, your O'Reilly's, your uh, all the other usual uh, auto zones. Uh, plus, we do have a, a an auto mall here, so all the major manufacturers and the dealers they are present in Nampa, so you can always take it your car to a recognized, authorized factory dealer. So that's great for the guys. What about your wife? Does she have any problem finding some place to shop? No, like I said, most of the uh, uh, the businesses that you are, the, the nationally recognized businesses in California do have a presence uh, in the Treasure Valley. Some of the more, you know, obscure ones you might have to go to Boise for, but as far as all the items that uh, my wife would go to, they are in the area. Now, um, speaking of your family, you've got a son that, has kind of grown up over the last four years here in Nampa. How does that compare to his time back in California? I think uh, there's more and tolerance and, dare I say, encouragement of going out and enjoy nature. Uh, I know from Nampa, Treasure Valley area, you can go one hour any direction and get a totally different outdoor experience. Go south and we are in high desert. Go south in about an hour. You're in dunes. And if you like in motorcycling or off-road vehicles, you can do that. You go an hour north. Uh, now you're in the hills. You can find some uh, natural hot springs uh, and go hiking and explore those. You go an hour uh, west here, uh, more camping and fishing and hunting. Uh, those are all activities that are dare I say, encouraged. Yeah, certainly not discouraged, unlike uh, my experiences. Nice. So um, just to wrap this up, if you were to give advice to someone that's in California, or we call it Cal, California, Oregon, Washington, or any other state, um, what should they be thinking, considering um, what kind of processes should they go through when they want to check out the Treasure Valley? We had a, a hearty discussion in our family about what we saw ourselves doing certainly in the next couple of years, but 10 years, 15 years down the line. Also really assess what what activities and hobbies and other things that bring meaning to your life and make the, you know, list those out and really ask yourself, are we allowed to do this uh, in California, Oregon, or Washington without getting too much, you know, pushback micromanagement from authorities? Uh, when we did that, we realized a lot of the things we were interested in working on cars. I mean, we got to the point in California where working on your car in your garage was getting to be verboten. Uh, we found that Idaho is much more tolerant and rational. Uh, it's certainly not a do whatever you want aspect, but they're, they're more tolerant. And there's really a, a viewpoint of people understanding and respecting each other and working together and trusting each other that you're going to do the right thing and not harm each other. So that was really, uh, Idaho allowed us to check those boxes off of, can we do what we want to do and respect each other in the process? So talking with your family, talking with an agent up in the Treasure Valley to maybe get some more information? Certainly. Uh, you know, reach out, do your uh, research. Uh, we uh, met Treasure Valley Dave and he spent most, uh, a lot of his time taking us around and not, not just 
you know, pigeonholing us into a one particular town or one particular neighborhood, but actually showing us the whole bell curve. I think we spent like two whole days, raw way on trade time, uh, checking out uh, what's the upper end of the pricing, what's the lower end, uh, seeing what's available, and more importantly, what can your housing dollar get? And that was really almost exciting because knowing that comparing what your California housing dollar gets you versus what your Idaho housing dollar gets you. It's uh, very, uh, it was very eye-opening and very encouraging and allowed us to uh, really rethink and really make the leap of make, moving to Idaho. And are you glad you made that leap? Yes. Uh, our family overall is uh, much happier. My son, I have check-ins with my son and my wife about do you want to move back? And every time the answer is, no, thanks or some other version of it. So right. uh, certainly much more at ease. I can go in our front yard and just enjoy life and f feel safer knowing that we can do what we want to do and you know, enjoy our life and not be perpetually under assault by uh, forces we don't agree with. Nice. Wow. That's some great information. I hope you guys got some encouragement out of that and maybe a little bit of education. And if you know somebody that needs to see this interview, Please share this video, like it, and then subscribe to our channel. That helps out so much. Um, Brian, thank you for stopping in. It's my pleasure. Anytime, anytime you got something on your mind, you just stop in. Will do. And uh, for you guys out there, visit the website, www.treasurevalleydave.com. A lot of resources there for you. And, well, until next time, this is Treasure Valley Dave. Looking forward to helping you get home.